If a contract uses boilerplate language to define parties' obligations, a breach of contract claim can leave a court with the tricky task of determining what the contract actually requires of each party. In Bloor v. Falstaff Brewing Corporation, the Second Circuit explored what's required of a party if the contract obligates it to use best efforts in its contractual performance. Falstaff Brewing Corporation purchased the brewing labels, trademarks, distribution systems, and other property of P. Ballantyne & Sons, a business that produced low-priced beers. Falstaff made a one-time payment of $4 million and agreed to royalty payments of $0.50 cents per barrel on Ballantyne products sold over a six-year period. The purchase contract contained a clause requiring Falstaff to, quote, use its best efforts to promote and maintain a high volume of sales, unquote. The contract also included a liquidated damages provision to be triggered if Falstaff discontinued distribution of Ballantyne branded products during the royalty period. Despite Falstaff's $1 million a year in post-acquisition advertising, sales of Ballantyne products declined, and Falstaff allegedly lost $22 million on the brand over a three-year period. In 1975, new Falstaff management adopted a business strategy prioritizing profits over sales volume. In doing so, Falstaff closed multiple distribution centers, focused on promoting Falstaff branded products, and reduced the advertising budget for Ballantine products to $115,000 a year. The strategy successfully rehabilitated Falstaff's overall financial position, but also resulted in decreased sales volume of Ballantine products. James Bloor, Ballantine's bankruptcy trustee, filed a suit against Falstaff for breach of contract, alleging that Falstaff failed to use its best efforts to ensure high sales of Ballantine products and that Falstaff had effectively discontinued distribution of Ballantine products, thereby triggering the contract's liquidated damages provision. The district court found in favor of Bloor on the breach of best efforts issue, but dismissed the liquidated damages issue. Both Bloor and Falstaff appealed to the Second Circuit.